in real life. Shit. All right, well, I'll turn off the game now. Young Man God is up. You can guess what's going to happen. Strike it. Triple off the wall. Did you just hit one off the wall? No, I'm just saying that's what he's going to do. Whoever's tripping the pen, it's really loud. Throwing that out there. <laughs> is it loud? Can you hear it? Sure can. Yo yo is already one for one. Don't sit there and talk shit about yo yo. I love yo yo. Oh yeah, is that higher war than uh, Bryce Harper? White so I love Right Sox. He's my favorite follow. Boy. Oh, I loved him. Uh, what was it? It was like I, I, was, I like started to. I don't follow him. So White Sox would win the AL East by thirty five games. <laughs> Dude, he was hilarious from twenty sixteen. Like when they yeah. just, when they started like their meltdown, really? he was he was he was a hilarious on Twitter, and he was he was he's, he's uh, Yomer Sanchez is number one fan. Damn funny, big time. He's what Yomer's fan. He loves Yomer. He was on that train like since twenty fifteen. Yeah, he was Tom Fornelli. Yep. Oh, you tweet the link. link. No, I'm about to. Eloy pissed at the White Sox? Question mark. Joe Madden on the hot seat. What? <laughs> Dude, fuck it. And then John Heyman wrote something today, too. He's nope. like, there's there have been rumbling since last year. Like, what are you talking about? Heyman said that? Yeah. Literally just making shit up right now. What did Yo Yo do? It just keeps saying he hit it in play. He hit it in play. <laughs> Don't doubt the interweb. I thought you were watching it, so. No, I turned it off because I got to focus on the show. I I'm not nearly smart enough to do two things at once like that. You know we've been bullshitting for like 45 minutes. Yeah. Mm. All right, all right, all right. Link tweeted. All right. Hold on. Where is it? Here it is. Oh, baby, Central Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's our White Sox mailbox. Mailbag sucked. <laughs> and, and we're live. Yeah. <laughs> and we're live. Just know that we talk real shit. Real talk. Real talk. Oh. Real. Spit hot fire. All right. He must not. The have... questions. The questions weren't bad. It was just we only got two of them. <laughs> Spoiler: Madden isn't on the hot seat. All right. So come on. We're trying to draw in <laughs> double digits. People are awesome. Love I love our fans. Was that our fan? Never mind. Let me record. Oh shit! All right. Oh. Recording. And recording. <clears throat> Gotta warm up the fake podcast voice. <clears throat> the, old, the old pipes. <clears throat> What's going on, everyone? All right, here we go. What's going on, everybody? It's Friday, August 31st, end of the month, and you have found the Pen of an Ivy podcast. I am your host, Matt Zawaski. They call me Zo. And with me, as always, Aldo Soto. What's up, Zo? What's up, Nuke? Uh, Tommy Stella, he's back. Home run. So, go Cubs. Huh? Joe Manor in the hot seat. And the gentleman he's talking to is our resident fancy bitch, Matt Anuko. What's going on, Nuke? He's got a bigger wine glass this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a sweet 2016 Chad Pinot Noir from the Willamette Valley out in Washington. It's delicious, and it works in perfectly because it's from Washington with our guest this week. Oh, that was that was. You didn't even realize what I just did there. Wow, 
I, no. I was I, I was wondering where that was going. Madrigal. You just blew my mind. Fant A plus for that. That was like we almost sound like we are a- know what we're doing. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, the spin zone. We have once I get the brains back into my head after that. <laughs> we have a fantastic show for you this week. We got Aloy and his people are not happy. That Aloy is peace, Charlotte. So we're going to talk about that. Meanwhile, the big boy club is red hot, on fire, White Sox, watch out. Then as our wine comes through, <laughs> we are very, very honored to have White Sox first round pick on the show, Nick Madrigal. So that's going to be right in the middle of the show. Then we're going to flip the switch over to the Cub side of things. We're just, I mean... This Joe Madden, there's no other word for it, but just bullshit. We're going to talk about mm-hmm. all this goofy crap going on with Madden. And then, yeah, but we'll just talk some more shit. KB is back. Our beautiful baby boy. He's coming back. He's coming back. Our beautiful baby boy. He's back in the blue with a brand new swing. Yeah. Is he, he going to ruin chemistry? The Cubs have been winning. <gasps> Ooh. We can talk about that with a braid, too. <laughs> so, all that and a lot more, as always. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you are subscribing, rate, and reviewing us on iTunes and SoundCloud. I don't know what you do on Google Play because I have an iPhone, but you should keep doing whatever we need you to do on that. Tell your friends, tell your friends, friends. And with all that being said, let's tap this keg. All right, here we go. It was bound to happen. One side was this shit's been going on for far too long. I gotta feel like social media puts a little bit more pressure on the teams, and in the same breath, teams don't give a shit about social media. But it came out today, we're recording this on Thursday, that Aloy and his team, his agents, are not happy with the fact that the superstar triple-A superstar, is still in Charlotte. So we were, you know, talking before the show started, and I brought up, and it just it feels awfully similar to the Chris Bryant saga. But to that point, although you brought up some pretty good points on why it's different, so why don't you share that with the rest of the class? Well, I mean, I think the biggest part is the, let's see, the Cubs back, so Chris Bryant, his first full year with the Cubs was in 2014. He was obviously amazing. Uh, and then, so they're like, all right, bring him up. It's September, whatever. It's August. They had already, I think at that point, they had brought up Javier Baez in August. Um, and I think Solaire might have also been up, too. Ooh. And they're like, oh, why don't they keep it going with Chris Bryant? Well, obviously, there's the whole service time thing. And if you bring up a guy earlier... His service time clock starts earlier, and you lose a control. You lose one year of control uh, during the arbitration process. So I think uh, I think at that time it was the whole joke was uh, seven years is greater than six years. Um, I forget what it is for Eloy right now, but it's the same thing here. The other difference, though, is I mean the Cubs were ready to compete. Well, I guess I don't know. I don't know if you can. They were at the everything. beginning. They were. They had a decent yeah. season in twenty fifteen. Right. Mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah, so, like, the Cubs, I mean, their plan all along was to ring up Chris Bryant and, like, wait for that service time issue. It just it just so happened to be that the Cubs also, like, actually competed in 2015, so it was perfectly lined up for them. Mm-hmm. This year, the season doesn't matter for the White Sox. I know that the argument is, like, well, you're going to get this, where you're going to get the agent or the player pissed off. But, like, are they really that pissed off? Like, what's he going to do, sit out for – like right. his career, like it doesn't matter. Like it's fine. The, the, Chris Bryant filed his grievance in 2015. That's been going on for like four years. Still Nothing pending, happened. Yeah. I don't like. I don't think anything's gonna happen. Um, no. and I guess you're hoping for the way. I mean, it's it's fine. There's a rumor, I guess. I don't know that Eloy was offered up a uh, that he was offered like a Chris Sale uh, type contract, and like oh, they're like already supposedly. I don't. I mean, I don't know. It was on Twitter. 
you know, so obviously believe everything you see on Twitter. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, well, if Eloy was mad, he should have just taken that deal. Well, like, why would Eloy take that deal if every White Sox fan he's think he's going to be like an MVP player? Why would he devalue his like how much money he can make? So, let me tell you something. From being in the minor leagues, from being around these guys, they are they are not mad. <laughs> they're just not. They're like when you're this close and you know you're going to be in the big leagues next year, you just it's literally a month. It the, no relationship is being ruined right now. And if it is kind of like if Eloy's a little bit big on himself right now, kind of like, well, WTF, why am why aren't I up there? Like, like how much there, is he, there's enough time to patch up a relationship? Like, know? how much money is he going to lose? And like, when once you get promoted to big leagues, like, is it going to be like a a couple hundred thousand? Like no, no, no. You, you you know what he's missing is you get an incentive bonus for spending thirty days in the big leagues, and you know how much that bonus is like how much? two thousand bucks. Oh, I mean, so I mean, he, his, that? Do you think it's his agents that are more pushing this because they're just getting antsy and want to get paid? Personally, yeah. Well, yeah, because it's it starts the clock earlier. You get that you get to free agency exactly. a year earlier. That's all it is. Right. Yeah. And if they're, you know, I mean, or the extension process happens sooner, you know, everything is accelerated. Of course they want their, you know, for every this is the way the, the agents work too, is like for every like guy that an agent has that makes a multi million dollar contract, he's got seventy five other guys that never pan out. Right. So, and he's also footing the bill on like equipment and things like that. So, you know, they're not crying poor. Many of them, you know, Scott Boris is not hurt, you know, not hurting for money. But of course, they want the guys to get up there quicker. They want them to get the service time. They want them to get to free agency quicker. They want them to get, get to free agency younger because they can, you know, compound those contracts. They can, they can turn them over. Right. So, you know, it, it, to me, it sounds like that. I mean, I'm I'm sure he's a little bit like, why aren't I up? I'm hitting almost 400, and I hit a home run every two days. You know, outfielders against the man because he's hitting just yeah. shots like crazy. Yeah, but here's the other part too: the, is is that, and and I totally agree with you, although that it's a completely different scenario with Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant was a college player. He was drafted the year before. He was literally making a push to be up you know, only like 12 calendar months from, you know, the time he was drafted, which isn't, wasn't that uncommon for a while. Like Ryan Zimmerman, I think spent like six weeks in the minor leagues. Mm -hmm. He was in the big leagues. Um, so there's just so many things that were different about that. I mean, even Mike Alfranco, uh, he was another one who filed a grievance. Um, and all those young players you see now, like Acuna and Soto with the nationals, they're in they're competing a little bit you know like the nationals just decided hey we're gonna you know move a few guys um so this whole thing with eloy too i wrote it up in my piece today there's three scenarios either one the white Sox know he's ready which this this is the one i believe they know or the the, the way they're going they know he's ready they're not going to bring him up because they don't want to spend leave him down in the minor leagues longer next year. They'll never admit this because it's just terrible, but this is the game. This is the game you have to play. Right. So if you don't bring him up this year for meaningless at-bats, you get him earlier next year. Uh, the second one, the, the second idea is that he could be brought up, if they think he needs more time in AAA, which I doubt they do, they bring him up this year. Why not? Bring him up, let him get some time in September if you know you're going to leave him down in the minor leagues next year for two months, two, three months. Don't think that's happening. And then the other scenario is like, just bring him up and go for broke. But, you know, it, no team's ever going to admit it. Rick Hahn was in that article by John Heyman saying, you know, I'm not adding anything to it. We'll make a statement when that, that's what I'm interested in is like the AAA season ends in a few days. So, um, Apparently, there's some kind of like announcement coming up or statement coming on like what the future of his season is. So maybe that's just like kind of bluster, but apparently it was in a text message to Heyman. So maybe they're going to come out and say something just like, we're shutting him down and he's done. <laughs> See you next year. Going back to your one of the points you made earlier there, Nuke, you know how 
And I totally agree with you guys. I definitely think it's the, the money grab thing by the agents trying to influence. But everybody read the, the Players Tribute piece. You've seen the interviews with Eloy because they're on Twitter every day. I don't get pissed off from him. Either he's really no. hiding it or he's just a dude that wants to hit bombs in the city of Chicago. That's all he wants to do. He's just like, just want to hit bombs, dude. Just let me play. But I don't get angry. I don't get disgruntled. It didn't. He always interviews with a big smile on his face. Like, I don't yeah. get from him. I yeah. agree with you. I totally agree with you. I mean, there's nothing there that signals disgruntled, frustrated, anything like that. So that's why, like you said, you know, like, he seems like he's having a good time and that's what they want. They want him to, they want to see all of this. And like I said before with Michael Kopech earlier in the year, they want to see a little bit of struggle. He hasn't struggled. So, but at, but at the same time from being a position player, knowing, you know, how well he's been able to, or how consistent he's been able to be. And it's not just a flash in the pan or it's not just a streak. Like okay. this is the real deal. He's, he, he's, he's ready to go. So I think he might just be anxious because the team he's going to is on fire. <laughs> mm, without a Brayo. Shut up. <laughs> well, a, this, this is the run that Nuke was hoping for that would happen this back in June. another one of those runs. Nuke threw <laughs> the fiery, like, <laughs> take of, oh, the one after 23 and 19 in the last 42 games. Abreu's been hurt for most of them. Is he expandable? Shut the mm. – <laughs> No, buddy. Come to New Jersey, give you some nuggies. I just like to stir the pot. <laughs> I get what you're saying. What we were saying off here in all seriousness, it's not like he's like in a different country or anything. He's still in the locker room. He's still talking to these guys. He's still part of this team. He's a week away. But to kind of segue into this, the White Sox in their first 91 games, 30 and 61. The last 42, 23 and 19. 11 and 5 in their last 16 games, currently beating the Red Sox as we record this. And I mean, they went to the Bronx and won a series. First time since 2005 that's happened. To me, I mean, obviously, this is a lot of fun after watching them get their shit kicked in all year. But with them being this young team with this young nucleus and Guys coming up, and you're seeing guys like, uh, like all the, like you said, you never even heard of him, like Demar or whatever. Lamar, Lamar, Demar, Demar Shamar. <laughs> you never heard of him. He came over from the Twins. He has a huge game in the Bronx. Like a, a Daniel Polk is happening. You know what I mean? A Nicky Del Monaco is happening. You know, like all this stuff is happening. Adam and, Engel. Shut up. And. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Andrew is playing good. I will. He is playing well, but he 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 played good. He played good, but what I'm getting at is they're starting to for these young guys, especially like a guy like Yo Yo Kopic, some of these other guys that are you know Rodon, all these guys that are going to be these future pieces. I like seeing them having a blast because it looks like they're having a a great time, and but also winning while doing that. And now they're starting to build like this winning culture where I wouldn't say winning culture, they're having a hot streak, but they're, they're seeing what it feels like to have a good time and win and how much winning in anything is way more fun than losing. Like, yeah. And, and you know what they're doing is they're playing good baseball. Yes. Fundamentally like it's good baseball. It's fun to watch. Even if they lose, they're not just giving away the game. They're competing and then, you know, they let the chips fall where they may. I got to say, I mean, like, maybe I've just been dialed in a little bit closer the past week, but when Kopech was uh, promoted and he threw that first game, man, it's been energized, hasn't it? So hasn't the, like, haven't, haven't games been supercharged? I think it's that, too. And not only, and I think a little before Kopech, the run that Rodon has been on and right. uh, in August – the other guy is Ronaldo Lopez, Lucas Giolito. Yep. Like, you're finally getting that, you know, Lucas Giolito was terrible, like, for most of the first half. Ronaldo Lopez started off hot. Then he had, you know, his struggles in the middle of the year. Now he's had, like, a solid month of August. 
-hmm. and then you have Kopik up here. So you have like the you have your what is it like four, three, three, your three gun guys, and then all, and then all pitching well at the same time. Throwing yeah. four, yeah, yeah. All four, and then you throw in a Dylan Cease or one of these other guys that are killing it, and you have your rotation for the next decade. Let's go. And that's why you leave Eloy down until next year because then you can possibly bring up Cease and you're talking about having that. There you go. Yeah, but I'm going to go 2-1 and one versus Detroit, 2-1 and one versus the Royals, 2-1 and one against the Twins, another 3-1 and one versus Detroit, and then 2-1 and one in the Bronx. Like I said, it's the bottom. They're of about to sweep the Red Sox. The beating, I hope they do. You know how many – and it was – I get – I mean, the White Sox are a bad team right now. Record-wise, bad team. So they beat the Yankees, and the main, like, East Coast, because we all know that the East Coast is very prominent in the sports world, Yankees fans, celebrity fans, and writers, and even the Godfather, <laughs> somebody woke him up to tell him the Sox won the series in the Bronx. But they're all going on Twitter being like, how the hell do you lose a series to the White Sox? They suck. Okay. Is that earned? A little bit. But it was <laughs> got to the point where it was like, all right, guys, like, mm, calm down a little bit. We get it. We're not, you know, the Red Sox, but we're not a oh, – that's, like, But that's that that's typical New York. I got to – And I loved it. I'm sitting there drinking up all the tears like you're drinking your wine. Just give me the jumbo glass. Let's go. And then you have all the Red Sox guys, though. Being like, aha, uh -huh, you fucking suck. You lost to the White Sox. I would love it for the White Sox to turn around then and then sweep the Red Sox and just have the entire East Coast be like, oh, bullshit. All right, guys, give me, <laughs> give me your hot takes. Give me your hot takes for 2019. Right now, you're riding high. What are the White Sox going to do next year? Seriously? <laughs> Come on, give me your hot takes. You're riding oh high God. now. What was it, Nick? What was that? What was that record since like uh, the All Star break, or what was it since July? They yep. have the second since best July, record in the NL Central. In, they're in the second in the NL Central, and they're only, only by like a game or two. There you go. I love that you're making us do this because it's baseball, and there's going to be ten years <laughs> between now and the start of next season. I'll go. No, but I mean, like you can you can do this. I mean, you've got. You're going to have Eloy up for like basically the whole year. Basically the whole year. You're going to have Bryce Harper. Yeah. <laughs> you like Nikki Delmonico's Instagram photo? Delmonico's Instagram photo. It's going to happen. Don't run from your emotions, Nuke. It's Plus, Manny Machado. We know that connection. Yes. And That's then, right. oh my goodness, this team is going to be silly. I didn't even get Bumgarner. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Why not? Let's go. We've got the money. Kershaw's going to pop that out of the deal. He's going to come to Chicago. Rick Hahn said that they're going to have the money to compete with anyone. So. Oh, thank you. Uh, Oh. No, but I, but but I think if you look like realistically, if you look at the, if you look at the pitching, if you if you look at the rotation, you're looking that if they if they win 15 games each, or let's be very conservative and say they win 11, 10 games each. Yeah, I think it's going to be more towards that. But yes, it's not even it's not even just how many wins. It's just that you're going to have those quality starts, you're be, and you're not going to exactly. be like it's not going to be James Shields. It's going to be. You're going to be Michael in Colbert. every game. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be in every game. Second so, play wild card. Oh, there you go. I, I could see. Yeah. Second, I don't know. The uh, AL East is still troublesome because. Yeah. That's why I said second place, no wild card because the AL Central's donkey dick. It's mm -hmm. terrible. They're going to finish in third place this year after the horrific start of the year that White Sox had. Yeah. I think they can finish. Cleveland's still going to be the, the standard in the Central. Yeah. I think the White Sox can finish in second place in the division, but like you said, the AL East is still going to reign. They're going to get one, and they're going to get a wild card. Exactly. So that's – although that's my fearless yeah. – All right. Season. Mark it down. August 31, though, 2018. Mm -hmm. because 2018 because then, White Sox, wild card team. Anaheim's going to go crazy in the offseason and put – they're going to buy up every – Why? They can to put them around Trout. What? They're going to lose Trout. <laughs> That's another. He's gonna come to the White Sox, right? Well, yeah, right. Because because he wants to be with a winner. It goes Twitter doesn't lie, and then Instagram is a close second, and then <laughs> racist kid you went to high school with that works at Applebee's. So it goes in that order of 
That's the hierarchy. Yes, that's the hierarchy. Everything of verifiable information. Everything on Twitter's true. Twitter, Instagram. <laughs> you like some a guy's post on another team on Instagram. That's sending. That's major eyeballs. Big time eyeballs. So, but to put a bow on this before we get into the much anticipated interview with Rock's top pick, Nick Madrigal. Yeah, I know. I keep wanting to say Mad Real. That's what I call you, bud. I know you're listening to the show. I, I call you Mad Real. And I like that play you pulled off off the deflection the other night. Yeah, he, he did things last night. Yeah, it's crazy. I Oh, and Nick, no matter what Luke said to me in this interview, he said you were too short for like two months. <laughs> Luke, are you gonna are you gonna admit it? it? Be like, hey man, I, like I love you, to. but I think you're kind of short. I think it's probably gonna be the first thing I say. Um, anywho, you have, have that leg kick because you're five foot seven. <laughs> Look, um, it's fun, dude. This is fun. It's fun to watch the White Sox. It's fun to watch a White Sox game now. Like we said, they're having fun. You got. <laughs> Yomar walking around with a replay bag thing he made from tape with headphones and Gatorade like cups. That dude's just pure electricity. I'd love for somehow in this offseason if we could figure out how to get him or a translator on the show. That would be unreal because that dude is just – I'm all about that guy. But they're having fun. They're winning games. It's good fundamental baseball. It's not – you know, six solo home runs and you win a game six to five. It's not that shit. It's good baseball. It's fun to watch. I'm enjoying myself as a White Sox fan, and I feel like we've almost earned this after watching that first 90 games of the season. And Rough. it's fun. It's just fun. As long as it's good baseball, yeah, that's all I want. Just some uh, third place goofing. We're just having some fun. Just third place goofing over here. And then. <laughs> So we'll go off of that note. We're going to get into the interview. White Sox, first-round pick from Oregon State. I'm pretty sure he just he, – was he strike out twice by now? I don't know. He didn't strike out. He, He's a great player. Great, great Absolute baller, nice guy. Can't wait to see him up in the big leagues in a couple of years. I really, really in my heart of hearts feel like we're seeing the leadoff man of the future for the White Sox. So with all that being said – Big ups to Noob for getting this guy on the show. Nick, mad real, mad. <laughs> Thank you, Nick, for coming on the show. As I say to all of our guests, open invite to be a reoccurring guest. We'd love to have you on again, especially as you move your way up the ranks. Don't forget the first pod that had you on. Just saying. So thank you, Nick. Much appreciated. So now we are going to flip the script here, and we're actually on time which is weird for us. So we're going to put the script here. We're going to go to the north side because there's just some crazy-ish going on up there. I don't want to say who because he's been on the show before. Don't say it, damn it. <laughs> I'll Bob, say it. I don't care. I know, Bob. Bob, what are you doing? Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Bob, Bob what are you doing, Bob? <laughs> so Bob Nangel put that right up in Chicago. Yeah, he puts out a story – Basically, saying Joe Madden on notice. Joe Madden's job in jeopardy if the Cubs don't make a deep playoff run. So I'm not going to do this as much justice as a passionate Cubs fan would. So Aldo, as you do so gracefully every week, paint us a picture, please. So, like, I don't – like, I get it. Like, these guys – he's a national guy. Obviously, he has sources or whatever. He has guys talking to him. And I mean, obviously, the uh, the whoever he cited MLB executives, several uh, MLB executives. I don't know who those people could be, but whoever they are, I've said it from since the story came out. Like, thank God they don't run the Cubs, right? Because how <laughs> the Cubs? I, I wrote about it. The Cubs have or they they should like win the division this year. That would be their third division title in a row. They would be their fourth straight playoff appearance, which has literally never happened. In their franchise history, it'll be the very first time that they made the playoffs four years in a row. It's all been under Joe Madden, who's you can if you can hate him because his goofy antics, his dumb road trip themes, whatever. He gets the job done. He is perfect for 
like this nucleus in the clubhouse, the personalities in there, it's a perfect mix. So <laughs> just for the, for the, and I think what, I mean, Madden called it dumb. Obviously he's not going to say, oh yeah, they're, um, I have to win or they're going to fire me. Right. The old Epstein trash did be like, it's baseless. It's another, it was, he almost compared it like to, he didn't say directly, but like how he worded it. It was basically comparing it to the A-Rod thing. Where it's like you have an outsider coming in who has no clue what the hell is going on in here, just making shit up. But, but like the biggest thing that pissed off comes the Bob Nightingale. You can write something, you can like report it and be like, you know, I'm hearing these things. But you could also like give your opinion and be like, oh, by the way, that kind of doesn't really make sense because you know they've been winning. He still has one more year in his contract. Why would they fire him with a year left? And whatever, but Nightingale just gave it more credence. Be like, oh yeah, that could definitely happen. You know, he's right. Whatever. And then, <laughs> so Theo Epstein goes on. He goes on the radio and he blasts. He blasts that entire thing on Thursday. And then, like Thursday night or thurs later in the day, John Heyman, another national guy, he writes a piece. He's like, you know, there have been rumblings since last year that people are getting tired of the Joe Show. What are you talking about? <laughs> No, I, I don't know. Like, Cubs fan, are you tired of making the playoffs? <laughs> right, like, are you tired of averaging like ninety-five wins a year? And are you tired of winning the NL Central? Yes, it's the worst. It sucks. Joe Madden is terrible. He's the worst manager ever. I guess I'm not. I like Joe Madden. I fucked with Joe Madden. I like Joe Madden. The only time he ever lost me was when he brought in the damn mimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's because they're mimes, and yeah. Well, but I like Joe Madden. I know he takes a lot of heat for some of the decisions he made in the World Series. I get that. Okay, fair and enough. That's the thing. That's fine. Like, yeah. I don't think anyone is going to argue that Joe Madden's like the best, no. you know, in play or in game manager. But everything else that he does, the preparation, keeping the guys loose, handling the lineups, like he every day he has eleven guys that should be in the starting lineup, and he right. finds a way to get guys. You know, enough rest, enough playing time to keep everyone loose for the past four years. I got a question. Go ahead, no. As a whites or not a whites, as as a Cubs fan, has the bar been raised on your expectations though? And how on and how far do you how much leash do you give Madden because he won that World Series? As long as you're making the playoffs. Like the MLB playoffs, anything can happen. You can have a crap, like an average team just get on a hot streak at the end of September and they're just rolling that momentum. Mm -hmm. And then you have like the 2007 Colorado Rockies who were garbage, but then just made it to the World Series. So, like, just get to the play. Give me a chance. That's all I want. And that's what Joe Madden's done every year. I don't know. Like, yeah, okay. Like, the whole, everyone always brings up the, Oh, they've been to three straight NLCS uh, series, but they've only made it to the World Series one time as, like, some negative. Like, do you guys realize how hard it is to make it to the World Series? That's all, though. As a White Sox <laughs> we, we know. To get to a championship series. <laughs> like, like, there is a thing where, like, like I don't think I don't think the the expectations have been raised where, like, you ex- the expectation now is you get to the playoffs. Yeah, especially because you still have the same roster, a yeah, better like, roster than you did have in 2016. Yes, and but the thing is, like right now, you could say the expectation is to get into the playoffs and then see what happens. But like to expect like a World Series championship, like if you don't win the World Series, it's a complete right. failure. Now, you know, if it's like it, it's 15 years from now or whatever. And these like ten year, like these seven to eight years of the core passes, and let's say they only won in twenty sixteen. I guess maybe you can make an argument like, hey, it's like the eighty five Bears. The, they should have won more or whatever. But like you know, there's still time, guys. It's it's mm-hmm. year four, and right, they've exactly. been right there every year. No, and and that's was- like that's like Yankee expectations, where it's like yeah. if you don't win the World Series, you're out. You know, and it's like a quick, you know, it's a short leash. For I know a time, getting it. For a city that, like, the Bulls haven't won since 1998. The White Sox have, their championship was 13 years ago. The Bears haven't won since 1985. Uh, I mean, there's the Blackhawks, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Zoe, 
Well, they, mm-hmm. they just don't matter as much. No, they won their they three, just don't matter. and that was great. They've been the best franchise like in the past decade. That that just doesn't mean as much as oh, I you know, to the city. I've accepted that. It's fine. But I mean, that's fine. That's great. But like, mm-hmm. the, the, by the way, <laughs> I know the way that the, the some Blackhawks fans are acting now. Guys, come on, three, three titles in six years, like. Yeah, not gonna, you're not going to win. You're not going to win a Stanley Cup every year. They're going to be bad this year, but that's for a different show. But anyways, I was. it's funny that you bring up the 85 Bears because when Nuke, when you asked that question, how long of a leash is Madden going to get, why don't you ask Mike Dick and his barbecue sauces? <laughs> or his Mike, Mike Dick is like the most overrated coach ever, and like half the city still loves him. I take Mike Dick a bad coach. I take Lovey Smith over him. Mike Dicka, was a, Mike Dicka was a shit coach. That team was amazing, and he won one Super Bowl. I can't even listen to him analyze games. He doesn't analyze. He just says, yeah, go hit him in the mouth. Okay, hit him in the mouth and come back in. Hit him in the mouth, him in the mouth again. I We're, saw this perfect tweet comparing the Cubs. Like it, was, it was like the, it was the Washington Nationals are having the season that Cubs fans think the Cubs are having. Mm, like, right. Mike Ditka has the ego that like some fans think Joe Madden has. Like Joe, just because Joe Madden is like out in the public, does interviews, is friendly to the media, doesn't mean he's like a bad guy or like a bad, a bad guy or like a me guy. And like, and there's like something in baseball where you kind of want that as a manager, like you want taking away the pressure away from the players. Absolutely. So like, I don't. <laughs> there's this weird perception. I think I honestly think it's just like everyone loved Joe Madden when he was with the Rays because I was like with the Rays in Tampa Bay. Nobody cared about him. Now right. that he's in a big market and it's the Cubs and it's a nationwide thing, it's like, all right, well, I don't like this guy anymore because, you know, whatever. Not whatever so. made-up reason in their head that he's um, I don't know, an egomaniac or something. I have a shocking statement. I'm going to make an unpopular opinion. <laughs> so, I mean, my criticisms of Joe Madden are – pretty well documented. I think he guys the luckiest man on earth in that World Series. I don't think I'm alone in that. Um, Joe Madden is a novelty. He does these unorthodox things. No, 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 no. But it works. And he's good. And I don't think he's not a bad baseball mind. I think he goes way too deep into the analytics too sometimes. But I think he he knows baseball. He's obviously a good manager. He's taken two teams to World Series. You know, he, he's good at what he does, but there is a point where the novelty gets stale and something's got to change. And when you are a novelty, you're an easy target to be like, say, okay, what's wrong with this picture? You know, it's that it's, it's, it's these little gimmicks and the, you know, dressing up and keeping it loose, you know? So that, that's my unpopular opinion. Counterpoint. Gimmicks get old, losing doesn't. Losing does get old, doesn't it? Winning doesn't get old. <laughs> Just making sure. You know, winning doesn't get old. And like all the time, consistent NLCSs with a World Series ring in there, and they're by, you know. True. Teams right now, they're about to win the NL Central again. But at what point do you – right, right, right. No, I agree with you, and I'm I'm totally playing devil's advocate here. But at what point do you just say NLCS is mediocrity? We're 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 satisfied with NLCSs. No, well, as a White Sox fan, I'd be <laughs> right now. Right now, we'll take it, right? But I get what you're saying, and also I also agree with you where when there is a losing streak or a time when it's just constant. You turn into the Eagles, which Nuke you're very familiar with. When you turn into the Eagles, <laughs> championship games, but you don't get to the ring. But that's when the guy who does stand out, and to Aldo's point, the guy that's taking it off the players onto himself like a good manager does, but that's when you stick out more like a sore thumb. That's when you become a lightning rod. And also to that point, I want to point it out because he just had a fire tweet earlier today. Joe Madden's son – is a plus on Twitter. Oh, he is really. No, you got to find. Judging by your look, you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I haven't. No. He's he's a little eccentric. He's a little out there. He's he marches to, but he is 
funny as hell. And like people tweet at him like, oh, your dad really fucked that up. Or no, this guy today he kept saying like, oh, daddy screwed up the lineup today. Daddy blew this. And he just tweeted back. He's like, you keep calling him daddy. It makes it sound like you want to fuck him. <laughs> I was crying laughing. I read that on the screen. Some old lady shushed me because I was laughing out loud. And he's really good. Uh, Adam, our Cubs writer at Sports Mockery, he's a big fan of him too because mm-hmm. people come at him. We live in this sick, messed up world where people come at people's kids. Yeah. Oh, like, man, Tressman's daughters were huge targets when he was the coach of the Bears here. Like, people, I don't know, it's stupid. It's If you're yeah. a person and you're going after a guy's kids because of something he does in a baseball game, you need to have your life evaluated. He but, also does right. reviews of Madden's uh, ejections. Yes. We'll do a breakdown of. They're fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to send That's you. Good. You got to follow this guy. He's absolutely hysterical. I will. But, and also for Madden, I'm, we're knocking segues out of the park today. So also for Madden, he's getting his beautiful baby boy back at third base. KB. Playing for the Cubs. Those piercing blue eyes are back in our lives. But the thing I want to talk about and get both of your opinions on Nuke from the technical standpoint and although from, you know, fuck yeah, KB's back standpoint. Um, it looks like we saw some videos of an adjusted swing. Now, I know the injury, it was a shoulder, correct? Yes. Yeah. And people were saying that he, before he went on the DL stint, Madden said this, he was adjusting his swing to the pain. And we talked about that on this show, that that could be a very dangerous thing because muscle memory and habit. And so now we see this video of him in Iowa coming back off the DL and it's an adjusted swing. It doesn't look like too much of an adjustment, but Nuke, why don't you start this off now? Is this something as a Cubs fan people should be looking out for? Or, I mean, anytime you really adjust your swing, I guess it's a big deal, but is it a big deal? You know what? The the video I saw that day when it came out was from kind of like back on the backhand side of his swing. To be honest, I didn't see much of and, and it was in slow motion. I didn't see much of a difference. He's still pretty flat with the barrel. He still gets a a small load. I mean, I didn't see a big kick. I didn't see, you know, I couldn't tell whether he was closed or whether he was staying longer through the ball or trying to go the other way. I mean, he dropped the head on it and he kind of went, you know, left center. So I didn't see a big change. Um, I, you know, to be honest with you, I could see more of a change if I were if it were from the regular camera angle out in center field, but also admittedly, I haven't watched a thousand years of tape on, <laughs> on uh, Chris Bryant, but there might be a subtle, there could be a subtle change in like a drop of an elbow maybe. Cause I, I know he was really flat with that barrel in the back and almost, almost pointing it South. So literally the only, literally the only thing he changed. That's the was- only thing he changed. No, no, the only thing he changed was on his follow through, he would always like let go. He would always like have his follow through with one hand. Mm-hmm. The only thing he's changed, like, and it's, he said it's to add more power. I don't yeah. know if that's like, we'll see if that's true or not. Is it on is. his follow through, he keeps both of his hands. Both hands. Yeah. Now, during the first game, he did that a couple times uh, in like his first plate appearance. Uh, and then there's another time where he still had that one handed follow through. So who knows if it's just going to be every time or what yeah. it is. But. And, and that, which shoulder was it? Left shoulder? Yes. So, so that makes sense. And that could be a significant thing. Here's why. Because if it was like a, an extension issue, because that's where you would hurt your lead shoulder, is mm-hmm. getting through the zone and that arm gets extended all the way out front, um, that can be painful and could lead to kind of ripping across the zone and pulling out early and not keeping that front side aligned with the plate and in. So if he's got to go both hands through, yes, it is. It's a, it's a myth to say that that's more power. It's a stronger swing because you have your power zone on that top hand. Mm -hmm. hand. (laughs) He's my strong hand child. Um, So 
that is what they always say. But I mean, if you look at Ken Griffey Jr., that guy's not holding both hands all the way through, and he could, you know, smoke a pitch. So yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, you know, I think it's a good move as far as bat control and and having a stronger swing to the baseball. Um, but I don't necessarily think that. I mean, I mean, it's 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 actually pretty drastic when you think about it because. Hitting a, lo a lot of hitting is about comfort. I and love if he's uncomfortable holding that barrel, that bat with his top hand, it could be a problem. You just talk yourself into eh, it's not a big deal to actually it's this serious, is pretty serious, here, guys. <laughs> but so let's assume that the new and improved swing goes well. He comes back up from Iowa, ready to go for the playoffs. Although, what does your Cubs infield look like game one of the playoffs? Game mm -hmm. one of the playoffs. Oh man, it's so weird now because they had they brought on Daniel Murphy. There's mm -hmm. obviously David Bodie. It's oh, easy yeah. for me. Addison Russell, like right now, it's looking like Addison Russell is the odd man out. You have oh. Ben. You have Ben Zobris who continues to rake. So I guess what I'm asking is, where do you put Bodie? I think I mean Bodie's gonna be on the roster, but at this point, if Daniel Murphy keeps hitting the way he is, I think Daniel Murphy has to stay at second base, mm -hmm. and then. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to kick out Baez, so Baez is going to be at shortstop. When you can't kick out Bryant. If you can't, you Chris Bryant, if he's back, he's going to be at third base. Rizzo's going to be at first base. So David Bode is going to become your super utility guy along with Ben Zobris, I guess. All right, that odd shit wasn't to your infield. It was to, I just looked at the Sox score, and it's 4-4. Four to four. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Who blew it? Was it Giolito? It was the top of the fourth. What happened? Or top of the seventh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mookie Betts hit a home run. Awesome. Oh, wow. blue. Uh, sack fly to score Ian Kinsler. Swihart, right, single to right. Brock Holt scored. I don't know if it was Giolo. Let me see. Oh, I need answers. Gio went 6.1 innings pitch, two hits, one run, one earn, two walks, eight Ks. Then Gomez came in. Three oh. <laughs> yeah, it was Gomez. What did they say? How many pitches did Gio throw? Why are you taking him out so early? I wonder if he got tugged up for a few runs there on that third of an inning. Nope. Oh, no. Okay, Gio had a high pitch count. He was up to 113. He had 100%. So that's understandable. So, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Bummer. Bummer. Well, we still got time. But I, I didn't mean to take away from your Cubs infield. So, Bodie makes the team. Oh, and he's he, definitely making a team. Yeah, Eddie on the – he's on the breaking case of emergency roster. But I mean, I don't know how you can leave him off either. You can't leave him off. You can't leave him off. Like do, do you have the space, though? He's the defense. the space, right? The, well, the thing is right now, the, let's see. Are you going to give so up the pitcher? So, obviously, in the postseason, you're not, you're not going to carry – the Cubs carry, like, 13 pitchers. They're not going to do that. Right. Right. Um. I mean, crap. I mean, there's Brandon Kinsler who they got. He's gonna. He's sucked. So he's probably not going to be on there. I they mean, do have a serious roster crunch. You're right. They do. It's going to be. I think like the last two guys are going to be like Tommy Lastella and Addison Russell. Or like Tommy Lastella, Addison Russell, and David Bodie are are going to be like two of those Bode, three guys Bode, are Bode, in, and then one of them out. Could you imagine this time two years ago saying that Ad Addison Russell was the last guy on? Right, that's crazy. I mean, that's how much he's – that the injuries have just really piled on since 2016. There's the whole uh, domestic violence allegations, and he's just been terrible well, for the past two years. Bi there's also Baez turning into a MVP candidate. MVP candidate. Yeah. Coming out of nowhere. David Bode, David Bode is like the yeah. savior. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, And, and then there's the, the whole Daniel Murphy thing, right. like him yeah. coming on. Right. And also, as all this being said, as a Sox fan, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is why. This is why I love it. I don't get Cubs fans. The like, Cubs fans were like complaining. They're like, "Oh man, where's Chris Bryant's going to come back?" But you can't oh, have David Bodie out of the lineup. Uh, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> look at me. Ooh, we got guys from the who didn't want playing on the field. Please. The UFC said it perfectly on Thursday. He's like, well, "We're in a great spot. We have." We have guys. We have multiple guys that can play multiple positions every day. That should probably be in the lineup every day, and that's the decisions that Joe Madden has to make. And he's been doing a great job. 
No. These are good, good problems to have. Yeah. Paul Hamels, and he tweets his throw his lead foot, and now he looks like a freaking Cy Young pitcher. <laughs> Whoa. 0.69 ERA since joining the Cubs. Oh, man, this is such a horrible thing. Hey, you Darvishes out, right? They're dealing with injuries. Chris Bryant's been out for like half the year. I, seriously, there's a lot of times where I forget you Darvish is on the Cubs. <laughs> well, you don't we... forget it next year. Oh, another another injury uh, update. Drew Smiley, who the other oh, right. free agent pitcher, he started his rehab assignment on Thursday. Struck out the side, so he could be a guy coming up uh, joining the team in September. And he could also be a starting Dude. pitcher for them next year. Let's do a quick let, let let's do a quick rundown. Do you know who the who the uh, Cubs are are going to bring up and for the expanded rosters in September? There's there's this one guy who used to be like a I think he was like a first round pick, Alan Webster. He he's a pitcher. There's Dakota Meeks, who's another prospect guy who's been unbelievable this year, but he hasn't been called up yet. Tell me, Dakota Meeks is like a three hundred pound catcher with a mohawk. He's a relief pitcher who's just nasty. They probably just bring up like four or five pitchers, and, <laughs> and then there's Dylan Maples. He's been nasty too. He just, he just, oh, that guy. He's he reminds me of Carlos Marmol. He's he has great stuff, but you just uh, he can't control it yet. He sound like uh, like computer generated baseball guy. <laughs> oh, and then oh, and then the Cubs made a trade. There's another August uh, waiver uh, trade. Okay. They traded for Bobby Wilson, who also sounds like a made up name. It all sounds cool, by the way. <laughs> Bobby Wilson, he's going to be like their third catcher in September to, to give uh, Contreras some time off, I guess. Oh. So, there you go. Mm. Cubs have options. Who are the White Sox going to call up for their playoff run? Oh, no. <laughs> not not Eloy. They're not, not this Eloy. This is good. Not <laughs> Eloy. <laughs> Number one. Are you ready? Are, are you ready, Zach? Are you ready? Blue Bob? Carson Palmer. They have to. They got to give him a shot in the pen. He's on the forty man. He can do it. I got. I got Palmer. Oh goodness! I'm gonna make myself pull this. Pull this one up. How come I can't remember? Palmer, Cordell, and Tilson, possibly. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, they're going all pitchers. Who is it? Maybe Tyler Danish. I hope you can hear the sound of how hard I'm sh nodding my head. No, just shit. Uh, so who you want, you, you you don't want to bring up anybody? Tilson trash. Um, I mean, I'd rather just. Can they just be like, "No, nah, we're good." Just yeah, leave. of course. Yeah. They're not going to. You alone. They they should they, they they should bring up some. They should bring up some pitchers. Bring up the entire Winston Salem. That Winston Salem team might. Win the AL Central. To be honest with you, no, you're Sox, burning. You're burning the time. The White Sox oh, are just Aaron Bummer. Oh, what, I remember that guy. I, that was Game One. Uh, Ricky Renteria like made a pitching change with two outs in the ninth inning, up by like ten runs. And that was Aaron Bummer. <laughs> and then White's in a very rare moment where I was embarrassed about White Sox Twitter. The Bummer jokes came out. <laughs> oh, I know. Wait, I have a better hot seat question. Hot seat, Ricky Renteria. No, he's still the no. He's so bad at things. All right, give me some Omar. You Vizier. think he's not bad? He's Rick, Ricky Runner. Okay, I know you're like the old school guy who loves bunting, but Ricky Runner, yeah, like bunts more than anybody in a in like, league. Yeah, stop giving away free outs. Omar, no, no. Omar, oh, no, Omar, give it to me. All right, so here's here's who I got coming up: Bummer, Omar, Carson Fulmer, Omar. Shut up. Um, <laughs> don't forget you have Nate Jones that should be off a of DL soon. He's been throwing. Oh, I completely forgot that Nate Jones was still with yeah. that. Well, Wellington Castillo will be on one of those. I we'll forgot about him. Spot. I wonder if he lost all his power now. Um, Jose Abreu, obviously, in the next week. Um, but other than that, that's really it. I mean, I could see them possibly just bringing up Tilson and Cordell just because. But the outfield's already crowded out there, so I really don't see them bringing them up and spending the money on it. They could bring up Mickey Adolfo, which they won't. No, they won't. And as I hate it. I think you're right about Fulmer. They'll give him one last shot. This is it. This is it. 
absolutely it. And he's, uh, I mean, you just hold on to him, leave him in triple a, put him on waivers, DFA him, non tender, maybe. And then he'll go to the Yankees and become like a stud. Yeah, exactly. Is Ful- will it, would Fulmer uh, qualify as a rule five guy or no? Uh, he, he or no, he's still because he's still on the forty man roster, right? He's still on the forty man. Oh, okay, never mind then. But they can drop him. Yeah, they can drop him. They, yeah, can drop him no? I, I I think in order to get off to drop him from the forty man, doesn't he have to go on waivers? I think so. There's some kind of process where like every team gets a a chance at him. Was that was that the, he was a first rounder, right? Yeah, yeah. Twenty. Rick Hahn, bad, bad drafter. Mm, no, <laughs> not an idea to say. You Nick, know, when you look through this, so we appreciate it, Nick. Rick Hahn, not a bad drafter because he. Took- <laughs> no, he's not a bad drafter. No, I mean that Carlos Rodon now is looking like a great pick. And you know what? Shout out Rodon. Girl, is wife or girl? Wife. Wife. She- Ashley Rodon. Hilarious. She is actually pretty funny on Twitter. Yeah. And yeah, she's been doing it for a while where she like she'll screenshot the zone. What one like seriously? Oh, Copic Day was treading. The next day she starts she tried to start the hashtag Rodan Day. And I was like, this is not gonna work. <laughs> it was funny though. She I mean, she wasn't being serious. She was having fun with it. And she's actually she's a great follow on Twitter as well. We that actually might be a good guest on the show, but he was pretty funny. Uh, that's dude, this White Sox season for a team that the record looks like that. I've had a lot of fun following well, along recently. Did, did, did we already throw it out there? How good the White Sox are after the sixth inning with the lead? I'm with the stat, and then we're closing shop. Go with it. The White Sox, I think. Let me let me put the. Because we're accurate, I'll pull up the tweet. That, and we're stat fanatics. We, I will pull up the tweet. The White Sox, after the sixth inning, are forty and ten Brilliant. with a lead. Locked down bullpen. Forty and ten when leading after the sixth inning, and their winning percentage gets better after that. Except for tonight when they took a 4 0 lead to the 7th. Yeah, to the 7th. So they could still win. They could be 41 and 10. Not helping that. Uh, so, By the way, people are going off about my tweet with, with Abreu. Anyway. <laughs> why, why don't you say it again, Nuke? What? Uh... Uh, Nuke, I won't say anything. Go ahead, say it again. Uh, let's see. I think more people like the replies than my actual tweet. <laughs> hot take, that, hot take that, from Nick. That's what he's going to get in trouble. Uh, does it concern anyone else that the White Sox are playing their best baseball without Jose Abreu in the lineup? And does this make Abreu more expendable? And on that note, we're coming up to time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. That was our show this week. Thank you very much to Nick Madrigal. Yes, Nuke, I was waiting for you to say that so I could do this. Um, thank you. We have a great show for you. Coming up next week, we'll stay with you riding into the playoffs. Now it's our playoff sprint, and we have all the call-ups and fun stuff like that. So make sure you're tuning in. Subscribe, rate, review us. Tell your friends, tell your friends' friends, tell your aunt, and have her tell her friends. So everyone's on board here. Uh, we appreciate it. Always you can tweet us at Pinwheels Ivy Pod. DM us. They're always open if you have questions or something you want us to talk about on the show or if you have a guest that you would like to hear on the show. Let us know and we'll do our best. Um, So for Matt Anuko, Aldo Soto, I'm Matt Kowalski. This is the Pinball and Ivy Podcast. We'll see you again next week. Mm -hmm. Confirmed on Instagram. (laughs) Because it happened. Yes.